Good morning. At the Supreme Court today morning, it was that uh, we expected to have at least uh, interlocutory applications uh, from both sides uh, that have been uh, uh, subject matters in this particular petition uh, affecting the presidential election that were held on, on August 8th. But uh, so far, uh, from the understanding is that uh, the judges have decided that uh, these interlocutory applications will not be heard uh, today, uh, but they've been now scheduled for tomorrow, I think, starting from 7 p.m. Uh, that's when uh, at least the Chief Justice will be able to uh, uh, consider his bench and uh, get to, uh, to, uh, to hear those uh, interlocutor applications. But then at that particular time also these, these particular sessions will be held in, ca uh, in camera. So uh, the media, I'm told, might not be uh, have an opportunity to get uh, to know what, uh, what the, the various uh, uh, lawyers that have been put in place will be arguing uh, before the, the, the judges uh, tomorrow. But uh, in the afternoon um, uh, we expect the, the, the Registrar of Judiciary, Anna Madi, uh, to give us a, br a, a, a breakdown on what will happen uh, starting Saturday, uh, uh, moving moving on now that uh, the petition uh, will have matured uh, for, for hearing uh, after all uh, the parties int interested in this particular matter have filed their affidavits and also responses, uh, various responses to various accusations that have been put in place. Uh, uh, so far we saw... Uh, Yesterday we saw uh, the uh, Jubilee uh, presidential candidate, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, file his affidavit and in his affidavit he, he argued that uh, uh, this particular election that they did a very, very massive campaign countrywide and whatever votes they got, the 8.1 uh, million votes that uh, was, in, was ruled in his favor, he says it's worth it uh, because of from their arising from the campaigns. He also claims that uh, his party at least has at least... Uh, uh, a, a, a majority member from the governors, it has a majority in the um, members on Jubilee ticket in the National Assembly, in the Senate, and women counter rep. So he's uh, taking that argument uh, to try to consolidate his case and say that uh, this particular election he won in a free and fair manner. Uh, we've also seen uh, the IBC, okay, the, pres uh, the president say that he did not deny allegations by NASA that he did compel the the, uh, the uh, county commissioners and civil, uh, civil servants like cabinet secretaries to campaign on his behalf. Uh, uh, he says that uh, he's, he's denied that allegation and he says that um in, in as much as he knows that uh, uh, he's not aware of any cabinet secretary or uh, county commissioners out there or, or chiefs who campaigned on his behalf. There was also a threat that uh, an allegation that was made by NASA where he, they said that uh, in Makueni where the president d during his campaigns he threatened chiefs and intimidated them to, uh, to, uh, to, in order to mobilize people to vote for the, for, the, for the Jubilee administration. He's also denied those allegations and says that uh, he was only putting up uh, he was just trying to show these public servants on how they are supposed to behave when it comes to the government of the day. Uh, the, the other allegation that uh, uh, the, Jubilee or the Jubilee presidential candidate has also tried to dismiss is that allegation that... Uh, uh, he used uh, state resources. You know, the Election Act says bans uh, the use of state resources. So he says that, uh, 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 or advertising of any government achievements, but he says that uh, he's defending himself over that and says that uh, he did uh, whatever was done was in line with the Article 33 of the Constitution that uh, allows uh, the freedom of information. He also is in, in, in invoked that uh, the, the right of the public to know some of those uh, deliverables from the government. So those, those are the arguments that uh, the Jubilee uh, candidate has, is, has put forth uh, before the Supreme Court. And on the IBC side, we've seen uh, the IBC also come up with, with defense that they've all denied allegations that made by the, the NASA trying to say that the elections are not free, fair. Uh, we've seen IBC argue that um, according to them, they claim that the elections were free, fair, and also verifiable. And uh, they've also said that uh, they did not hire any presiding officers, contrary, uh, outside those who are gazetted. And also, they have also denied that allegation by NASA that uh, there were at least 14,000 and polling stations that were not gazetted. They claim that, IBC claimed that all polling stations were gazetted and its returning, returning officers and presiding officers were also uh, people who had been gazetted to participate in this particular election. They've also defended their, the results and say that uh, there is, the, these particular results, uh, as, as they were, were tabulated in... Uh, in a fair manner. But something interesting is that uh, IEBC is now trying to indicate that whatever uh, results uh, uh, that were 
being transmitted on the public portal, uh, they're claiming those were, not, those were mere statistics and they were not uh, the results of that particular presidential election. So they say that whatever the claims uh, that are those transmissions, the Kenya Integrated Air Electronic Management System was transmitting through the public portal were mere statistics and could not, those were not results. And also maybe looking at that particular portal, even as, uh, as today, it indicates that uh, the number of uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, rejected uh, votes uh, at the public portal now stands at 403, 503, 403,503 votes. But according to IBC in its affidavit, they say the number of rejected uh, uh, rejected votes, they're putting at it at 81,600. So we can see there's a variation in figures between what the IBC has, as, as is now putting on, as, as came, was reported on, on Form 34B, vis-a-vis -vis what, uh, what came on its public portal, which now IBC has dismissed as saying that uh, those particular things that are appearing on, uh, on, uh, the, on the public portal are mere statistics and they are not results. Uh, the other issue that uh, we've, we saw that um, uh, the, the the NASA petition also uh, the presidential presidential candidate come and argue was that uh, IEBC colluded with the Jubilee aspirant to manipulate the results in, in his favor and they were they argued that uh, uh, particularly especially by this idea of IEBC trying to release these early results through its public portal was meant to uh, uh, give a, a perception to the public that uh, the Jubilee candidate was was leading and we've seen that the something that uh, uh, IEBC is trying now to poke all it all in to and say that uh, those were mere statistics and they should be disregarded. What should obtain is that uh, that form 34B and 34A. We saw NASA also claim that uh, in the, there was a major, major uh, discrepancies on forms 34As and form 34Bs, and also they, they are accusing IBC of having announced uh, or declared President Uhuru elect without uh, at least uh, benefit of uh, 10,000 polling uh, results from 10,000. Uh, polling station, that's from 34As, but IBC now claims that uh, by the time they were declaring uh, Uhuru, President Uhuru as the president-elect, uh, then uh, by that time they had results from 290 constituencies, uh, that is including the diaspora. So these are arguments that uh, each, each team is trying to put forth to see on how they can win this particular uh, the, the argument. And now IBC says it's up to the, uh, to the, uh, to the NASA team and its legal team to come and prove uh, the allegations and say surely this particular election Election had malpractices and maybe also the figures contained in Form 34 and those in Form, form 30, uh, 34B uh, are not, uh, I mean, figures contained in Form 34A which come from the polling stations and those in Form 34B, the, the, the final tally that at constituency level do not, do not, uh, do not rhyme. So the IBC says it's up to the NASA to come and uh, verify or prove that uh, those particular uh, those particular figures do not tally and maybe they were done to favor uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. The other thing that has also uh, has also come out uh, we, we, in, the, in, the, in the IBC affidavit uh, is to do with the with the manner in which uh, the Court of Appeal, the, the Court of Appeal case, because uh, NASA has also come and said that uh, uh, in the Court of Appeal case, uh, when it ruled that uh, uh, the results, the, the, the constituency should be the final, the final place where the results will come from, uh, I, uh, IBC now claims that uh, uh, they complied with the Court of Appeal uh, uh, orders and ruling and they, they are in compliance and they did not, uh, they did not uh, in any way uh, go against the Court of Appeal ruling. So those are the arguments that will be, for the, will be before the seven judges of the Supreme Court to listen to when this particular petition starts. Yusuf? Very interesting arguments indeed, especially from the affidavits there from both IEBC and Jubilee, even as we await for that pre-trial conference uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, Mimo, one final question. Today, Friday, the 25th of August, serves as a, a deadline uh, for any other parties who are interested or have a desire to be uh, part of the petition. Already we have two, Kuro Court and Patrick Wainaina, who are both presidential candidates in the just-concluded election. Do we expect some more application? With regard to uh, uh, with regard to all other uh, other interested parties who want to be enjoined in this particular matter, uh, we we are yet to to get to know whether they've been accepted or not. But as what we know is that is in public domain out there is that uh, uh, the former uh, the, uh, one of the presidential candidates, uh, Waina Ina, uh, I mean Maina has uh, has also come uh, come on board through his lawyer Hillary Kenyanju, who says that uh, they will be moving to be enjoined in this particular case. We've also heard also sentiments by the some of those civil organisations 
like the Kenya Human Rights Commission and AFRICOG also uh, uh, intimating that they might be enjoined in this particular case. Uh, oh, the other candidate that has also expressed interest to, to join the case is that uh, of the Third Way Alliance. So those particular matters will get, will get, uh, will get uh, confirmation from uh, the, the head of the judiciary, that, that's the register of the judiciary, to get to know whether these parties have really complied and they, whether the, uh, the Supreme Court has allowed them to be enjoined in this particular matter because initially the only interested party that filed this petition was, was NASA and they, uh, NASA sued IABC, President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, also uh, the chairperson of IABC, Wafula Chebukati. But as the case, the case went on, we saw after the filing, we saw other interested parties uh, ca uh, claim they were now to get on board and also try to put uh, their one or two uh, cent contributions on this particular on this particular case and also maybe try to inform uh, the, the process. We've also had at least an application by the, the Attorney General. He wants to appear as an amicus curiae or the friend of the court. But we've seen uh, this particular this particular application by the Attorney General is being contested by NASA because uh, they feel that uh, the Attorney General has always been leaning to the side of the government and maybe his inclusion in this particular matter will be unfairable to, 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 the, to, to NASA. But then uh, that uh, will also await to see how the court, uh, the judges of the Supreme Court will go about it and how the two the lawyers from both camps will argue the case and see whether uh, the AG will be admitted as an amicus curiae or not. Yusuf?